Welcome to Face Hammer. In this video, we are going to talk about every death faction for Age of Sigmar and give you an overview of each of them, how they play, and why you should collect them. So we're back to talk about death, and I'm very scared. <laughs> it's appropriate. Although, actually, this is more Stormcast, isn't it? Uh, maybe it's a Relictor. I think it's quite Nighthorn. You're, yeah, it's, either. It's disturbing. Is it a uh, Harry yeah, Potter was, thing? We're going to lose followers. Yeah, I was a, <laughs> I was a Death Peter. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. It's like, it's I, I didn't wear the hooded cloak, because otherwise I would have got a bit worried. I know. I would have thought you were a Blade Guys Revenant. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so we've... Um, We've had what we thought is a pretty useful idea for a video, especially for people considering maybe starting either AOS in general or a new army, right? Yeah, so we figured we'd do a video series where we go through every single faction um, and talk about what they are, what they're about, show you some of the models, and also talk about how they play and feel on the tabletop. And yeah. at the end, give you a rating of what we think, out of five, which factions are good for beginners. So yeah. that's our that's kind of the overview of what we're doing. Um, Obviously all our opinions, but we're going to try our best to back <laughs> them up with some good reasoning. Yeah, so all of this is, of course, subjective. Uh, we, If you like the models more than you, you might put them at a one, but we'll put them at a five. So it's all completely subjective, but it's, uh, you know, this is our kind of opinion. Um, so let's go through Grand Alliance Death and let's talk about some of the big players in the faction for those who may not know. Um, so obviously, Nagash is the god of death. He's a big dude, isn't he? He is all. He's on my wall right behind me. So I'm a bit, mm. bit of a fan, as you can tell. Um, he's he's basically in charge of all of them. He's the reason they exist. He's kind of in charge of Shaish and he's Lord of the Undead. He is. He is a god. He is one of the Age of Sigma god models, as we like to call them. You could expect to pay half an army's worth of points to put him on the table. Uh, yeah, and he is he is very fun. Um, so Nagash is the main man, um, and he's from the world that was. You can, you know, he's he's got so much background and law. He's got novels dedicated to him. He is he's the best. So we've also got the called the Mortarks. So the Mortarks, we've got Lady and Linda, which is the 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 Night Haunt Mortark. Um, the ghosties. Yeah, and um, Catacross, who is the Mortark of the Ossiarch Bone Reapers, um, and he's he's the newest uh, Mortark to be kind of turfed out from his uh, his uh, penumbral tomb that was hidden by Sigma, the pesky man. Um, and then um, we've then got the I would call them the classic Mortarks. I was just going to say classic, <laughs> which are the. Arkan, who's actually um, in the Ossiak Bone Reaper tome, and he's sort of like Nagash's uh, right hand dude. Um, yep. He he's always got machinations of power, but he's never really going to usurp Nagash because he's he's his uh, he's, he's his like budget, budget Nagash as far as army creation goes. As yeah, well, to he, some degree he is. Yeah. Um, then we've just got Neferata and Manfred von Karstein, which are the vampire Mortarks from the soul blight grave lords so manfred's um, all about hitting people super hard and nefrat is a bit more kind of sneaky and casty and debuffy yeah and um she actually invented the soul blight curse and manfred is kind of the guy that wants to be nagash but he's never going to be nagash because hit ultimately... people hard enough until he's nagash <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's uh he's the more talk of night and the frat is the more talk of blood and arcan is the um the from the legion of sacrament so, so they're sort of more magic focused um so they're the main players in death and death is a faction that um we'll go through each one and we've got like a little radar diagram but essentially they don't have very much shooting um they're very character focused you have um lots of um sort of healing returning model kind of mechanics uh, they all do it slightly differently or different things. They also have a ward save pretty much universally across yep. the faction. They're generally melee focused with an emphasis on magic. Um, mm -hmm. 
and that's that would say probably so. A lot of the magic is 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 kind of like making your opponents worse or making your stuff better, though. Like they do have mm. some pokes, but it, it, a lot of it is, you know, turning someone else down or turning your stuff up a little bit, right? Yeah, and depending on which faction depends on kind of the, the the sort of the nuances of that like you've got the osiarch yeah. bone reapers that are kind of elite and independent whereas the soul blight needs the buffs and debuffs to make their deathless yeah. minions shine so basically the death faction they they want what they want to do they want everyone to be dead and everyone to be a mindless servant under nagash's will so obviously they're nice people so <laughs> <laughs> just trying to build an empire. Uh, we're going to start <laughs> with flesh eater courts. So okay, let's do it. Um, these are the most alive of the undead that we're going to talk about. <laughs> they're um, also so a bit are, mad. <laughs> they are mad. If people were into Britannians, uh, th these guys are kind of have some weird undead version of hierarchy and superiority, and that they are eating people's corpses. So not necessarily dead, but you know they deserve to be here definitely. Yeah, they're a bit wibbly. So they're bound by the madness of their kings. The fleshy courts surge across the land in search of their next grisly feast. Um, and I kind of, you can kind of say they're they've got this ravenous insanity. They believe they're some sort of like court, like they're like kings and courtiers and 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 this aristocracy because they're so crazy. That's how they see themselves. Is how before they descended into this madness. Along on the carnivore diet. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> before they descended into this degenerate uh cannibalistic <laughs> way but the way they see it is it's all this like shining knights and and, and yeah. grand courts whereas actually it's thrones of bone and blood and uh, yeah. uh, and and, and that, that horrible and so that you you know they're kind of they're kind of gone a little bit too far um yeah. Frant so... <laughs> frantically mad and bloodthirsty but they also i think oh, they do a, an amazing job of playing exactly how their fluff portrays them yeah i think um, I, I i really really like these for that reason yeah so um i i think we've got the so i've sort of picked up some keywords so i've said they're sort of hero heavy because all deaf factions really need heroes um their heroes summon more um ghouls and courtiers and things to the table so they have this ambush kind of feeling they have this yep. maneuverability from coming on from the sides, so you get to feel this surrounded, but they also have very, very fast flying units and basically like run and charge or make units fly with their magic, which is very yep. powerful, but not the most reliable. Um, not much in the way of armor. No, they are fragile. So they they are a, a sort of a hoardy kind of fragile army. Um, they're quite, they're obviously melee focused because it's a deaf army. Um, <clears throat> and the way that what I've, done with these factions have made a little radar diagram and sort of given you a score between one to five five mean you excel in the area as a one means you're quite weak in the area or you don't do it really um so you've got from the radar diagram i put their spell power at three purely because they've got very good spells but their casters are quite fragile and they don't have bonuses yep. to cast and Not frequently, mate. you're you're struggling to to get stuff off. There are a couple artifacts that help you in that area, and obviously, like your army list can skew these numbers depending what you lean into. So if you really can, lean into, you can be mindful them. of you can you can get in those squeezing those bonuses because you're desperate for them. Yeah, so it's kind of like that return because your spells are key. Getting pluses to cast or extra cast is is going to make your army get you a better return on that investment. Um, yeah. They've got very strong melee, particularly around the monsters. So yeah, terror like, guys, terror right. guys, and zombie dragons. Um, they do have a bit of shooting. You've got some screams on the courtiers. You've got breath weapons. You've got the scream on the terror guys. It's not reliable. More than zero, though, and is, it's not you know, all right for death. So <laughs> it's kind of like it's there, but it's not. You're not forming an army around shooting. You know, it's it's yeah. it's a it's a complement to your melee. Um, I've put the objective catcher as mid because although they're good at getting there, they're not so good at staying there. Yeah, so. I, I completely agree with that entirely. Um, you can put plenty of dudes on there, but you you won't see a shield in this book. <laughs> so no, you know. not unless it's a, a ghoul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've put the resilience at about a three um, because again they've got a death save, but they they're quite fast, but they don't have much armor. 
so they're not as resilient yeah. as others. You could, you could have put them below a three, but I, I don't think they're that bad. It, it, um, it depends, doesn't it? Because if you're against someone with a small amount of elite shooting, that after save is actually just fine. You know, if they've got a small amount of high rend D3 damaging or, or something like that, it's fine. But if you've got someone who's got a lot of average shooting, that would be your nightmare. Mm. Um, and you've got access to things like um, Unholy Vitality spell. It gives you a five up ward. Your courtiers can summon models back into units that have been killed. Yeah. So you've got a kind of healing <clears throat> mechanic around your heroes. And your heroes are key uh, to the army. And They're mobility, I've put them at a five because literally they can get wherever they want to. Um, Come on, from the edges, you can rocket your guys forwards with extra speed. You've got access to run and charge. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. spell. Uh, and you can also, there's um, a spell that increases your movement by your wounds characteristic. Um, and you can also make a unit fly if it already flies. Yeah. I think it's run and charge. And then I think you have a, um, a way to... Um, increase your move flat across your arm if you take a sub faction which is blister skin so you can increase yep. your movement they've got right. access to fast units that fly so yeah. it's, it's a very yeah. fast army mm -hmm. okay that's, so that's flesh ears that's all there right yeah yeah but let's what, look at some we... models because yeah um they are a little bit dated because they're quite old, actually, but they are very nice. So I, I just think they have a really solid idea, and everything in fact sticks that idea. And if you like rabid-looking, angry, you know, bestial vampire-looking stuff, they they've got that down. Apart from maybe the ghouls. Yeah, the ghouls are quite very old kit actually, um, but they're still they're still cool. I always thought they were doing like West Side Story with the hands, like. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's. Uh, yeah it's pretty cool but i um they, they're really cheap as well with the start great start collecting, collecting. and yeah. they're very easy to paint so you can get them looking really good really fast they're like the the fleshy version of stormcast i would say mm. yeah they're almost like nurgle aren't they in that regard that yeah completely with less detail so i think they're mm. pretty good dry brush. dry brush and wash and contrast pornography as far as painting goes for sure yeah, so that's Flesh Eaters, and that moves us on to Night Haunt, which are the Cursed and Restless Spirits. Uh, the Night Haunts rise from the underworld to unleash terror on all who live. Scary ghosties. Yeah, they are. They're, they're, they're Flying bags. Um, yeah, so they're, they're kind of deathless spirits. They've got this aura of dread. They're ethereal. They have this wave of terror, and they're from the underworlds. So... Uh, a pretty kind of resilient army because they ignore rend, so they 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 all fly. They're quite fast. Uh, they're very infantry focused. They have a horde like feel, and they're obviously quite melee centric. Um, not um, not many or any big dudes. No, they don't have monsters. They don't really. I think the Mongol is, and it's a forge world model. But basically, other than that, they don't really have any. Yeah. yeah. Um, they don't have any like big monstrous characters, so like they're kind of led by Alinda, who's the Mortark of Grief. Um, she's um, so she's quite interesting. So like these these uh, were unleashed in the Necroquake, which is Nagash's big ritual in AOS two. So in the start set, um, and you had this sort of wave of this brow, and it unleashed all these spirits. This wave, the brow, of the wave, and they're all basically like tormented from life so like alinda it was very vain so now she's hideous in death and she has this ability where she can lift her veil and it's so disgusting it does damage and um there's a lot of chains and torment and um you know like a converting the... army or like picking a theme and run within it army like it's just yeah pick your nightmare and then rock on <laughs> fake blood you know make them all hessian bags from a horror film you know what whatever it is sax sorry yeah, so it's quite a um, it's quite a quite a nice themed. Uh, the models are gorgeous. I will get onto those in yeah. a minute. Um, but um, in terms of like the radar, the the sort of the the the, the radar of truth for the stats. Um, so they are melee focused, but they're not particularly good at it. They're kind of like death by a thousand cuts. Um, yeah, you 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 kind of have good spells, but they don't have a lot of resilient wizards and they're quite hard to cast. And Linda's the best yeah. caster in the army. You maybe you don't want to be taking those people in range to be able to reach your opponent either because they're at risk, right? They're not super resilient no. on a character basis. Um, obviously, lookouts are helps, but you don't get save bonuses for cover now and you, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't really help them. 
um your allies yeah. pool isn't great for healing as well uh, so they're, they're quite s schizophrenic in terms of how their melee resilience matches up against different types of opponent as well i think like if your opponent doles out you know uh, mm -hmm. uh, a yeah. lot of low quality damage and some mortal wounds on top that's a nightmare for you yes yeah, if they have a you know like a medium amount of high quality high rend attacks you're just like um and, and you know the same goes for shooting or stuff like that so they're they're completely you know they, it's almost as if they've got three different levels of resilience depending on whether you're facing mortal wounds you know melee or otherwise um high quality attacks in a lower quantity ideal or um a high quantity of lower quality attacks really what you don't want you don't want to be shot to death by you know units of 40 crappy archers that's actually really bad for you yeah you you'd rather face like three attacks that are damage five with red yeah. three than 15 yeah. attacks at no rend damage one one damage. because you yeah, yeah. the, the you'll smooth out more um weird isn't it it's it's a bit weird you but you you generally want less high damage attacks going through because your save matters more obviously it's still 50 50 so it's a little bit sometimes you can boss your saves and you've just stopped 18 yeah. damage other times you could just roll under average and it's 18 dead it's like you know it's 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 just the nature of the army um yeah it's a bit swinging and also local meta dependent so may, maybe yes. these would be a bad idea if you know your your opponent plays a lot of bone splitters or very good know, against some of bear mat though yeah <laughs> so, Rock um i think they're very fast they're very mobile you've got like um a command bit allows you to teleport you've got the dreadblade harrow can teleport around the table then mm -hmm. there there's they've got access to numerous bodies that are resilient and they're bravery 10 all death factions bravery 10 so you don't worry about battle shock as much they are what i would say a very very good army at blobbing on objectives and keeping them uh they're not so good at getting people off of them um but if you can get the board position and with the um the underworld kind of popping up from the ground ability they have they can be quite good but they haven't got access to like monstrous rampages and heroic actions um like They're finest hour hurt. isn't really going to come into it much with your no horn. just the heal maybe no with their bravery which isn't the bravery yeah, 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 the... you'll be doing a heal yeah. pretty much every turn i reckon so oh, yeah. um your little characters they're quite a swingy army in general aren't they so someone yeah. has to be prepared to deal with you know did you get a 10 inch charge and you get to attack before your opponent yes no makes a huge difference is your opponent elite or are they death of a thousand cuts that makes a huge difference so um they'll be ready to roll with the punches with them i think quite a bit yeah and you've got access to some quite powerful um units and synergies but um you know, you've got access to mortal wounds and some high rend, high quality attacks. You've got lots of medium quality attacks, but it's it's just the delivery. They're on thirty two mil bases as well, so like the new coherency rules does hurt them a little bit. Um, uh, yeah. Chain rasps on twenty five, so they're not too bad. But yeah, they're they're they they are you know they are struggling a little bit. So you know, not to they're, not to undersell it, you can see the tier list and we put them. But they're a synergistic army, army, aren't they? It's not like heroes and then the other stuff focused. It's it's all working as a unit. Yeah, you need to you need to be able to play it <clears throat> in a way that allows you to keep your holy within twelves or in, and your buffs are on um Ooh. otherwise you're gonna struggle um but yeah but they they're, they're a cool army and speaking of models they're probably some of the best models that gw make um yeah they are really cool and you can do a good job fast you, uh yeah. recurring theme in death here guys <laughs> <laughs> you can do a very solid job in a low amount of time as long as you stick to a few well done simple concepts assembly can be a little bit challenging um particularly on blade guys revenants so you get these join lines down the hoods um they're generally they're generally not too bad like they've got some easy to build kits uh the dreadblade harrows are, are, are technically easy to build and the chain the chain rasps are so uh, i love the models i think they're really thematic they've got a lot of movement in them joys to paint yeah. um, you could do them very simply you don't have to do them multicolored you could just do them like a ghosty glow there's some technical paints that help so from and then get your chains and it'll look great yeah, yeah. or just don't do what i do Absolutely. just didn't bother just base them yeah not a tassel in sight either <laughs> no. floating around and not a tassel in sight which Chains is good instead. Uh, yeah Metal. <laughs> cool so that's nighthorn um probably mm -hmm. moving swiftly on or maybe not quite so swiftly to the ossiarch bone reapers 
So um, <laughs> they, I'd read this little blurb out because it's a bit small and you can't see it. So the Ossiart Bone Reapers come forth in macabre splendor, for they are Nagash's will given form. All that they kill becomes theirs, body and soul. This is a military force like no other. Organised and efficient, led by generals created by the Supreme Lord of the Undead and lent a measure of his necromantic power. So they're kind of stuck is that the more um, advanced they are, the less watered down their soul, their original soul is. And as you get down to like the Mortec Guard, they're kind of made of an amalgamation of different abilities. Um, and those souls are into bone constructs and um, the whole thing of what they're about is they basically come to your village and say, you need to give us this much bone or we're going to murder you all and take it anyway. And they call it the bone tithe and they use that bone to build their empire and build their troops. And very friendly, is it? you can go, well, we've got lots of dead people because, you know, people have, we've got graveyards, we'll empty the graveyards. And then eventually you don't have any more and you've run out and you still need to pay the tithe. So perhaps you start then deciding, doing a lottery and saying that some of you, sorry, your bones go to the tithe and eventually you just won't be able to pay the tithe and then you're going to end up paying it anyway. So they are a very, and very nasty, like, nasty. Positively friendly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and these are kind of the, what I'd say the mockery of Stormcast that Nagash has made so his his like it's sort of very similar to how sigmar made stormcast is how nagash has twisted it to make the ossiarch bone reapers um they were hidden um under the vaults they were his little secret they got out when the uh the necroquake sort of disrupted the seal and let catacross come out so particularly cool army um they sort of say they've got this relentless discipline is probably like one of my favorite rules they have and it's quite a cool um it's just as a sentence kind of sums them up uh they have the ranks unbroken by descent they are obedient the bone tithe the ossiarch empire and they harvest the living so that they're collecting the bone so in terms of gameplay they will say they're martial they're elite relentless they're very melly they're tough undisciplined yep. so they are they are immune to battle shock they 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 have these different command point mechanic um they are very self-sufficient units they don't unlike the other death armies they're not you don't need heroes for the units to be good um yeah. the heroes generate your discipline points <clears throat> so are very important but they don't rely on buffs and debuffs as much yeah they don't have to be there hitting at the front they're quite a slow tide aren't they they are slow um they they do have cavalry which are very fast uh so they do have access to access to fast units they've got a very good balance you've got like infantry which are elite and solid and defensive you've got a monster that can heal them you've got catapults you've got cavalry you've got um some good magic you've obviously could have nagash you can have arcan you've got these sub factions which which can change the dynamic of the army significantly yeah. um they are they are very elite it's quite a small army you don't have a lot in it yeah. um so if we look at the radar they they shoot the eye doesn't it <laughs> it does it does um so they do they are resilient i've put them up as a four uh and yep. melee power i've put them up as a four and unlike other death factions their shooting is probably a three because more yeah. tech crawlers can be particularly nasty against some armies very long range you know you don't have to run up next to someone with one of those things mm. and i've put their mobility in the middle because they do have a way to boost it and they do have fast units yeah. but then i wouldn't say they're slow slow um objective capture again it's kind of the units that are resilient that need to get there a bit slow but they are quite good but at holding on the opposite of the feck right like yeah. once they're there they're great but it takes them a little bit longer mm -hmm. to get a huge amount of bodies on a on one an aos3 the boards are slightly smaller so it kind of helps you um yep. more tech are are particularly good the, the sort of the, oh, the generic troops they're very the very backbone. solid yeah for sure <laughs> definitely the backbone <laughs> <There are> several <laughs> backbones probably but you know um yeah. and their magic is good uh but it's hard to get it in your list and everything else so 
yeah. uh, if you take the gash, obviously your magic is going to be a lot higher. So it's kind of like it's free because they have access to Arcan and the gash, but their law is okay. It's very good their law, but you don't generally have access to a lot of it. So um, yeah, with triumphs, it's probably a good idea to try and unlock. Uh, sorry, enhancements, extra spells if you're going cast a heavy, if you don't take Arcan on the Gash, because yeah. the spells are particularly good. Um, get cog cogs in there to get an extra spell out of people or something, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Um, and they, they get some move from that as well, so maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea. They do have some healing. Again, it's hard to get in the list. Yeah. And they do. Um, the Harvester is a is a great unit for returning your models and healing, uh, but it's, it's a priority target usually. Yeah, it is. It's strong though. If someone can't deal with it, it can uh, it and twenty more tech guard can just win you a game. However, so yeah, definitely um, some potential. Yeah, and I quite like the crematorium when they get hit and they blow up and do mortals to you as they die because they're like Basically, made of yeah. fire. Um, I think that that's particularly good in the AOS three meta as well. I think mm -hmm. that's a, very good. A bonus. Um, I think the minis then. Um, I was a bit mixed on the minis because they're essentially all bone. So you, yeah. when you paint them, they're quite challenging because you want bone to be different colours to differentiate between bone that's like armour bone and bone that's like yeah. more kind of organic bone that they're actually used for their bodies. And then they've got these these overlapping armour plates, which, you know, are, are good. I mean, I think they're one of those armies that you can paint quickly and look good, but if you spend hours and hours and hours like the heavy metal team have to make them look amazing... Yeah. There's a the, lot of gap. There's a the, big difference between the return on investment and the time. pretty big. Yeah. yeah. I think you probably hit a point at the very, very end where you've put a ridiculous amount of time in and, and then you really reap the benefits, but it, it's not a progressive curve between, you know, more hours equals more quality as far as it looks. There's definitely a, an unhelpful gap in the middle. But as, um, a, washes... as a beginner, like dry brushing and washes, and contrast, washes, yeah. minor dry brushed and contrast, they had a patent nomination before they yeah. they like you don't need to labor of love them to look good yeah um <laughs> yeah, if anyone's got specific questions about exactly how they do that we're, we're super happy to go in depth on it so uh, you know just let us know below in the comments or something yeah and i think the assembly is challenging um so if you haven't the assembly takes a long time the the cleaning up is quite challenging i mean particularly the stalkers um because their head is like five pieces because it's four faces in a middle bit so uh, it's they are i would say <clears throat> and take a little bit more to time to build than they do to paint if you do them agreed um, yeah, quite a few people have done very good speed painting videos on these uh ninjon has an amazing one mm. uh n-i-n-j-o-n -N on the youtube so he's got a phenomenal one where he paints an entire army in a weekend and it looks incredible so uh, and check that out if you want some top tips yeah uh, but I, I love the models. I think they're amazing. They're really up my street. Um, so, last what but not least. What do you like least, more than their models, then? Uh, um, we'll go into Soulblight Gravelords, I guess. It's like more, they're everything more than everyone else. Right? <laughs> How biased are you with these guys? These are, these are your bros um, and have been for a long time. Well, I used to be a Tomb King player back in the day, or like a classic undead. Um, mm -hmm. I think for me, like from a gaming point of view, they they've got everything in in terms of they've gotten they've got a lot of depth and a lot of variety, so they keep me interested. But from background point of view, uh, they are vampir vampiric conquerors who lurk in the darkness of the mortal realms. So the Soulbite Curse is is kind of they're like the aristocracy of the night. Um, and then they have their reanimated horrors, deathless minions, the unquiet dead, and they've got their cursed bloodline. So their the curse runs through their bloodline, and the, depending on which curse or what variant of the curse is is kind of how they play. Um, I would say they're kind of martial um, to a point. Um, they're quite hero heavy. They have a horde feel. They are obviously melee. There's a lot of emphasis on reanimation, and they can be quite yeah. fast. Um, and fast, not necessarily in the movement profile, but but you've got access to things like terror guys, zombie dragons, blood knights, uh, ab, you know, even things like dire wolves, fell bats. They're all fast. They're all twelve, fourteen. Popping up through the ground as well, right? engines, yeah. Grave sites. You can you can put your slower units in the ground, and then they can climb out the ground in the game and and take board position. Um, they also, as stuff dies, 
you can during the game you can if it's summonable it can come back at half strength so they climb more climb out the graves and the grave sites are kind of your summoning points um they've also got healing uh the vampires drink your blood and heal when they kill and um you've got your kind of different uh legions so you've got like your different bloodlines so you've got the sort of legion of night where you can put stuff in ambush and manfred's legion you've got nefrata is more about the vampires and and sort of she they kind of buff the death rattle stuff but the vampires are key and then you've got um avangori which is a monster focused army vikros which like is werewolfy yeah like casting and kind of you know like they've got this like very kind of court type atmosphere and um, they're the characters from the cursed city um and then you've even got like um obviously nagash is in the book um so and you've got the castellite dynasty which is the blood knight martial vampire kind of blood keep list um lots of variety yeah lots of and different they, they all play on theme well at mm. a fairly decent level i would say like there's some that maybe aren't as strong as others but all of them are super viable like there's if you want to be super wealthy that's cool if you want to be mega martial that's fine if you want to be more sneaky that's cool and if you just want you know like hordes of skeletons and something really like classic you can do that too all of them are solid viable and look amazing and play how you'd expect them yeah and they're kind of your um they i basically put them four across the board apart from shooting because they literally yeah. don't have any the pac-man <laughs> the yeah, pac-man right almost <laughs> yeah i mean they are literally like s solid in everything like yeah they're, they're they're just good in every area apart from shooting um i haven't let yet to find and i think you can answer pretty much any question that any army can ask you uh, with yeah. something uh, unless it's right on the extreme extreme one drop you know 500 shot some things but i still think even you've got then options. you've got options yeah you've got more think... options than other people you can sure. still put it off the table right <laughs> if you want. Yeah. so uh, <laughs> i think they're they're particularly good um yeah very very loads of choice in the book as well right yeah you could start them as a first army and then play them for two years and change okay, yeah spend spend 30 quid or change 200 points every month for that two years and never play the same game twice if you wanted yeah and i think you've got you've got so many different war scrolls you've got like all your horde battle line units but you've also got elite combat units in blood knights uh grave guard yeah. so you've got your elite units but you've also got all your heroes are amazing like vampire and taking out those heroes is fun as well right yeah a bit intimidating for new players but you know you can customize the hell out of anything in the book and really lean into it if you want yeah and, and like i think it might be a little bit overwhelming to know where to start which might be the thing yeah. because you've got so many choice and so many things you could do and so many dynasties and yeah so you might if you're new you might be a little bit like i don't even know where to start but the, i think the the thing is just start and then your the journey will be yeah i think it should be a long journey but it'd be a rewarding one um whereas let us know as well if you've got a concept and you're like i, I want my heroes to hit really hard but i also want you know die wolves or something like that then let us know below and we will sort you out to the best of our ability yeah uh, and, and I, I think you can if you love zombies there's no, i don't think there's a war score in the book that isn't viable you don't look at it and go don't take those like everything's pretty much no i agree yeah um so if you like the models they're a good shout so models good segue so <laughs> i've got the blood knights on here uh and you know death rattle skeletons diawars and the lucavi which is the new sort of vengorian lord kit um i just think the models are stunning uh yeah i think like i think the skeletons are the best model in the entire soul bite range i just think they're amazing for what they are and the fact that you get to paint them up enjoyably as a core unit is brilliant too but a lot of it is quite good to paint fast you know it doesn't mm. have too much variety on it maybe some of the more avangori stuff has got you know like multiple different textures and stuff but things like the blood knights diewolves all on theme and enjoyable to paint fast not too bad to build either i was gonna say um, like assembly and build and painting of, of most of the kits is really spot on um yep they don't they're not complicated they might look like they've got a lot on them but you know even like the blood knights it's mostly armor with some cloth hanging out of it yeah um you've done a good video on how to paint blood knights and 
Yeah, Red Armor, Skelly's team. So, yeah, if people so, want, if people want uh, any tutorials on them, head over to Artis Opus. There's quite a few undead ones now, actually. Um, yeah, and then you, yeah. you've got access to things like direwolves and fell bats, which are just it's just fur and skin and a bit of blood and bone. Yeah. It's just so nice to paint. Um, I love the aesthetic. Um, I think the horror gothic kind of look is great. Completely, they really yeah. lean into it. So um, the only models I'm not so keen on are the Vicross ones, but that's a personal taste. So, uh, but I do like Red Car the Beast. He's particularly cool. Um, so yeah, yeah I, I Soul Blight, I big fan. <laughs> it's hard for you to say anything bad about them, really, isn't it? But that I, I would agree. You know, I have, I have a vampire count army, which is more of a zombie dragon army. Um, but I'm not, you know, balls deep on death as Russ is. I think they're amazing too. They loads of options. Um, perhaps some builds are a little bit techy to start out with. So mm. I would maybe recommend restricting your selection of war scrolls because they have a lot of variety. You know, that's also intimidating. Just maybe blood knight dragon out. and bats, right? That's all you need. You can start with Blood Knight, Dragon and Bats. You can start with uh, nothing but skeletons, uh, Nagash, and two heroes. You know, there's there's multiple ways to start it out more simply. But uh, again, if anyone's got any questions on how to run that, let us know. And do check out the videos we've done with Kiriath because he is starting a Soul Blight army mm -hmm. and is going to be taking it to an event. And he's never played the game before. Yep. So, um, or, or knew how it worked. So <laughs> we're going on that journey with him. <laughs> and um, Soul Blight's the latest battle tome. So, like, yeah. on our channel, we've got a lot of Soul Blight content, a lot of our list techs around Soul Blight because what I'm collecting. Um, so check out our videos for those. If you want more information, join our Discord yeah. and get involved in the conversation. Some of the older books we haven't done videos on because that was when we were in podcast, so we didn't have a YouTube channel at the time. But do fear not, whenever a battle tome is released, we'll cover it on this channel in detail, regardless of which alliance it's from, even if it's not from the best one, which is Death. And um, Russ has played all of Death, so um, uh, yeah. we're, we're going to be fairly well informed on that. I've even played some, so yeah. Um, so, probably a good idea to talk about the rating. All right, so, then. So, um, we've done this face hammer rating, so are <laughs> these a good first army for Age of Sigma? Very broad question. Um, what type of things have been considered in that then, Russ? What, um, what have we thrown into this very subjective part? <laughs> assembly, cost, painting. Yep. But also yep. complexity. Complication to play. Yeah. yeah. Um, how forgiving they are as an army. How, um, I, I, not necessarily how competitive they are, but more like what's a gaming experience like? Like yeah. how, how flip -floppy, head scratching really... are they? You know? Yeah. Tiny um, selection of war scrolls or lack of variety can also be bad. You know, it's it's nice to have something that is more simple where you don't have to get your head around it, but that might mean that you don't have options in the future um, or in a certain meta or something as well. Mm. So and how cool the minis are, but they're mostly pretty cool for death in general. Yeah, so. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I I I've got all, every death faction, so I I I can't <laughs> say I, I, for me they're all five in terms of model, right? So maybe just from degrees of five, but um, <laughs> so um, fleshy is we put us a four, um, yeah. which is you know, and I think we talked about like the models are very accessible, easy to paint, yeah. quite cheap. Um, easy the to army build as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Apart from the ghouls, they're a bit. If you care about mold lines, they can be a bit tricky. Um, yeah. I think... Them in blood. <laughs> you don't see it then. Um, just highlight them. No, uh, I think in terms of gameplay, like the army is not overly complicated. It doesn't have like tons of war scrolls. No. And I it does a bit of everything apart from shooting as well. Mm. You know, a bit of magic, a bit of combat, a um, bit of movement. Um, yeah. I think that they are... Like if you if you're interested in like winning your games a lot, they're a hard army to win consistently with. It yeah. will take. They need a fair bit of dedication. Yeah, to, to it get takes to that time point. because they are unforgiving if you make mistakes. So oh, completely, yeah. I would say that like they're one of the armies that you might start with and go, well, actually, I'm I'm losing a lot and I'm struggling. Um, because your command point, your summoning, what you bring on, how you heal, how you protect your heroes is quite important. That's so much. Um, yeah. But because they've got a really, they're quite fun to play with. And I think the theme's cool and you get to the table quickly. So that's why they're a four. If it was purely gaming, I'd say there might be a three, maybe even a two and a half. Agreed, um, yeah. But in terms of like gaming and painting, they're like five. So it's like it balances out, right? So if someone came to me and asked me, should I collect these for a first army? 
I, I'd say they're one of the, for the majority of reasons, they're one of the best choices anyone could make. Mm. And the question would just be, do you mind the grind of losing a fair few games before you find out whether they work for you? Mm -hmm. um, but that, you know, they're, um, they're great. If you can't deal with that grind and you like the idea of sending big monsters into people, um, maybe consider these core raiders. <laughs> Because uh, I think actually they're somewhat comparable in terms of you know going there and bashing face with big dudes. Yep, and we got the night haunt um, mm -hmm. coming in at three and a half face hammers uh, purely because they model wise assembly pretty good painting not sub not quite easy to paint the assembly can be a little bit more challenging. Uh, yep. but you need a lot of them um, because they're a horde army. Um, so there's there's like you have to have more models so it takes longer you can't do what you could do with flesh eaters and just have like three big dragons and some men yeah. <laughs> you, need, like, you need to have like 30 40 easy yeah. just in your battle line uh you know like units of like 20 there 20 there 20 there a couple mm -hmm. characters and other three units of 30 things like a couple of years like you, you've got to pay a lot so Quite it does a lot take of on a bit table of time. management of that as well. Once you do have them on the table, you know, yeah. there's a lot of stuff going on and a lot of things to move, which I think perhaps isn't time you know, is a problem. You... Like yeah. if you're new and you're you're trying to play quickly, because you've got so many models to move and fight with and, and you've got a lot of attacks that don't do a lot and you've got and you're quite resilient, the games go the distance and you've got to play fast. Otherwise you're gonna run out of time load, at a tournament. I would this say. Is. So yeah, if high mental playing, load, I would say for mm, Nighthorn. The wise. wholly within buffs as well are are difficult to manage and can be quite can be quite annoying because you're piling mm. suddenly you're not in range and you're like oh I'm not in that buff and so th they can be fairly complex. You can make them simple, but I think that the they that's why they're not a four for me. Is just the yeah, agreed. The, the, those factors just drop them down. Um, yeah. OPR Bo then, same, yeah. same grade for different reasons. Or yeah. Reasons? Um, so gameplay wise, they they're actually te techy. Um, you've got you've obviously got a different resource. They don't quite work. How everything else in the game works with relentless discipline. You need to yeah. have, especially now in free command points. It feels a little bit like a have not. You've got a like you've got an FAQ. You've got a book. How does that work with this? So as a beginner, it's 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 not it's going to be difficult to wrap your head around it. And learning OBR doesn't really teach you about any other army in the game. Ah, yeah, so I don't think that. they're a good army if you're trying to learn Age of Sigmar. Um, but they do have benefits where you don't have lots of war scrolls. They're kind of self-contained. Uh, the models are quite easy to paint. They're yeah. elite armies. You don't need that many. You don't summon lots of new units or anything. You don't need as many models. Um, the you do have the issue that the assembly is a little bit tricky as we touched on but um i think they're about get the same as nighthorn like yeah i think so you know get, get them on the table fast is fairly doable um potential built some builds involve quite a lot of models and quite a lot of variety of models as well and um i think they're a bit more expensive too which is worth considering mm. um yeah so that's that's the obr so the soul bite then obviously they uh they have a huge selection one big thing i want to add here is i i could mark these down to a four on complexity but it's up to people how they build their list so i think you need if this is going to be your first army perhaps ask advice on what is a a list that isn't too complex to play because you can have as much or as little complexity as you want in a soul bite list mm it's very easy to get tempted into having 700 different interactions and all of this and that you can end up with a lot of different units and things so it's kind of up to you where you start with that maybe you know five key war scrolls is about the right amount not i was nine. gonna say limit yourself to five war scrolls um yeah like if you and if you say well i'll have like a, you know a vampire on zombie dragon blood knights fell bats dire wolves and a vengorian lord that's the five and yeah. that's all i put in my army that's five war scrolls. They're limited react. They're limited in terms of like the synergy. Whereas if you go like, oh, I'm gonna have necromancer, white king, and you're suddenly then having to do more stuff with like, you know, buffs and combos and unlocks. Yeah. Whereas different wizards, yeah, like when you yeah. van hells and and all that kind of stuff. Whereas because those units become good with the synergies and the buffs, and you're taking like legion of night and getting like unholy impetus on the white king and stuff like that. But you, 
if you go keep it simple and you go, well, I'm going to take Avangorian, I'm just going to run three zombie dragons, a vampire lord and zombie dragon, and a Vangorian lord and some bats, it's simple. Like, it doesn't take a lot. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not complicated. But you can do extremely techy things with Soul Blight. And that's why I like them, because you can start a journey at a base level yeah. and you can grow into advanced in the same battle tome. So time Whilst growing a selection of painted yes. stuff that is cool to have as another option, you know, or whatever. Yeah. So any time you spend on units, like, uh, to paint to get your first army on the table is time invested for later builds, and eventually you'll have Absolutely. a suite of models that you can just swap around to adapt to the meta if you're getting into competitive play. Um, I think they're a good learning army because they pretty much teach you yeah. everything you need to know about the game apart from shooting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Models are great. They're modern if you can get them because a bit of stock's been an issue because they've been so popular, but they are there. You generally can get hold of them. There are some cheap options because they're not that expensive. Like really, no. like you, you, I, I three you times know. blood knights, a couple of large characters, almost there. Yeah, and like example. start collecting flesh eaters is actually a really good soul blight start collecting box. Yeah, a bit bizarrely, but yeah. Um, so you can you can do that. I think um, that's why I've put them so high. Now, the only reason they're not a five is because it could be a little bit overwhelming to know where to start as a beginner because you've got too much choice um but i think yeah. other than that they're they're basically bang on so yeah completely and come to us if you want some help on where to start we have plenty of opinions with these guys and our discord will have plenty of opinions maybe we should even throw together some su suggested lists for seat for people at some point in the future yeah i think um, i think doing yeah. some beginner lists would be a good idea for each faction yeah. so maybe that's another follow-up cool. show to this one uh, i think that pretty much wraps it up but i just want to say thanks for checking out this video we'll be doing more on each faction so we're doing order destruction Absolutely. and chaos uh, order might be split into several videos because there's quite a lot of them uh, <laughs> might take the elves yeah. separately um, be a lot more variety in those arrows <laughs> in the death one it's not going to be you know five pac-mans at this angle where shooting is so. no exactly um and if you like the the channel and like this video give us a like uh, subscribe to get notified you can join our channel um you can join our patreon join our discord um and check out all the things we've got and um yeah uh, thanks for watching and we'll catch you all again soon yeah thanks for tuning in guys catch you in a bit cheers